All right, so I have Wonder B with me. She's on the reconnaissance study group. And boy, has she been kicking out some hot bread fresh out of the oven. Whew. So much research she's been doing, um, so much that like her eye is hurting. Like I was asking her if maybe her retina is detaching or something <laughs> because she's having to read so many different documents. But in her uh, quest to help us all get relief, we came to the conclusions the last couple of Zooms that we've been having. And we are deciding to kind of do this on the Sabbath because just like those Maccabee brothers in the book of Maccabees, they said, if we don't do something, they're going to kill us. Those, the enemies are going to kill us. They're taking over our stuff, taking the temple desecrating it and that's exactly you know what's happening with us hey there's no money and we have negotiable instruments available to us but we just got to make sure that we send them to the right places so what we discovered in this last video with mike and wonder Bee is that we are going to look for the trustee the way to find the trustee you go to the uh business online like if it's Southern California Edison or Tesla or, you know, a bank or something, you look at their base prospectus and you find out who is their trustee because it's all in trust. You know, we all thought we were purchasing and doing commerce, but no, it's a trust. And apparently they're the ones. So uh, we discovered that we're just going to, Go on the base prospectus, which is on the company's website, to show us who the trustee is. You got to get the address, and hopefully there's a name, and hopefully it's not a PO box, because when we send them the uh, what would this be called remittance? We're gonna send the whole thing. And did we talk about what we're gonna write up here? Is it gonna be like A for V? Is this gonna be the instruction? Do we do it in red and blue like we've seen in the past? Or, I mean, this part doesn't really make I mean, that's, sense. that's, uh, yeah, I think we have to, since it's, we have to accept it. I think we have to show some sort of acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I guess that could also, you know, you write accepted for value. Uh -huh. I'm not 100% sure of all the verbiage yet of what should be on the top part what i realized is we shouldn't separate it mm -hmm. it should stay in one one piece um from what i've read um one piece mm -hmm. and it should be mailed to the the trustee it should be mailed to the trustee asking as a billing error notice it should be a billing error notice and you should be asking for a statement of accounting or the gap accounting um <laughs> from yeah. them and giving them <laughs> and giving them instructions yeah giving them instructions on how to handle it they know they already know but you know you're giving them the instructions of what how you want them to transfer the credits you you want them to you know use it on your behalf mm, yeah um, so you put the social and the dashes so yeah so then now let's say you did that you mailed them the trustee and and you got the address and you got everything and you mailed it to them and they play them and they want to dishonor it and maybe they keep the coupon and they just mail you back the letter and they say oh no you know whatever yeah okay so then now you're gonna write you're gonna that's a a notice of dishonor of non-acceptance right mm -hmm. so now you're gonna write them back an affidavit and you're going to have the notary kind of notarize all everything that you sent you know all the paperwork all the evidence you know you're gonna have all that notarized sent back to the trustee again letting them know that they're in dishonor yeah for not having accepted that and and again demanding what you want them to do right mm -hmm. so now now you have a witness right so that's and and an affidavit is a very powerful thing and it's notarized and it now becomes like a legal document you know so now you have a witness saying hey i in good faith 
sent this coupon in. I, I gave them the instructions. I told them what I wanted and they dishonored it. So now if you need to take them to court, you're on the winning side. You're already on the winning side if you've got to take them. And, you know, it's, you probably hopefully won't even get to court. If right. once you tell them, hey, this is what's happening, they may just want to say, okay, you know, no, we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Here it is because you have your documentations that you came with clean hands and you tried to do the right thing. Now, if it's a P.O. box, like you were saying, that you can't get that card back, mm -hmm. maybe don't do certified. Maybe do registered mail. Maybe through registered mail because registered is more powerful than certified. But doesn't the registered mail have to go to a person as well? And can you send it to a PO box? I don't think so. I don't think registered. Well, you're sending it to a person. I think if you got the trustee's name, mm -hmm. you're sending it to a person. But if it's a PO box, regardless, you're not going to get a green. Right, but regardless, you're not going to get a green card back if it's the P.O. box that, in the way that you're stating it. And in my opinion, I think registered mail is is more legal than certified mail. And it, and it has some sort of backing because what happens is that registered mail, is it, 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 it goes to the postmaster. Oh, private. He's in charge of that. So anything happens. Yeah, it's private. So it's it's almost like the same thing of if you can't get the card back, do it registered mail because you're still getting that kind, you know, that guarantee. So we're gonna have to spend like twenty eight dollars or something for this registered mail. I got these stickers. I don't know how to do the postal stuff yet, but I have these, you know. Have you heard about the postal going postal thing? It's a group. Yes. I have. I I'm not a fan, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, because you can't mail those from your own mailbox. The postman will not lift. You know, he won't take it. I've already tried. You had to like sneak it in, but I've gotten all these other ones back. You know, and then they put nasty notes on there like three cents. What do you mean? It's just three cents. I got all these sent back to me, you know, when you, what's it called? And look, look. I haven't gotten too much into stamp duty and uh, mailing yet. I've just been trying to figure out how to pay the bill before I get to the postal stuff. <laughs> the registered mail is like 28 bucks. It's expensive. And like, I don't want to be doing all these stupid motions when they're not even going to do good. But so far, yours sounds like it makes sense. Well, you know what? The, the good thing about registered mail, too, I believe it's like $10,000 of uh, insurance or something like that. Who was it that was saying, um, if it gets lost, you get rich? Yeah. But do we have to? So if they didn't insure, get it. If they didn't... Do we have to insure it on top or is it registered already means it's insured? I believe it's already insured. All right. Well, but I research it. that because I'm not, I, I haven't gotten too much into the mail. All right. So I'm going to have to, I want to do this. And what we discovered on our last video is you were saying if we're going to sign the bottom, like if we're making the money order on here or the bill of exchange, like making up our own. I, I'd rather use their paper um, that we're supposed to say without recourse. Reg was it registered agent? No. Authorized representative. Authorized representative. By colon the name authorized representative without recourse. That sounds good to me. Right. Uh, but you know yep. what I was just remembering? <laughs> I just remembered, this is a bill that I was going to send for someone else. I'm not really the op authorized representative. Well, you really are, because they told you you could act on their behalf. That's true. The same way that you're the authorized, the same way that you're the authorized representative of your entity. You're, you're so just right. the authorized he representative of someone else's entity. He lent me his name and he yeah. lent me his number. That's exactly what we do when we go give our number out to the car dealership or 
real estate person. That's wild. Right. Whoa. He did lend me his name and his number. So I guess I am. Uh, authorized. He did authorize me. Yeah, you're, to, you're, you're authorized. Yes, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. I am so going to do this. I am so excited. So I don't think I'm going to, well, did we read something in the chat that we're not supposed to be putting the stamp on here, like stamp duty or something on this thing? Was there something that we were reading? I mean, from it disqualified so everything them? that I read on the coupon. Yeah. I mean, I am not 100% sure about the stamp. And I don't really think it's necessary, 100% necessary. Um, okay, yeah, because I'm going to be I don't see why. You no, know, no. <laughs> Just saying. I know the stamp means something, but what it means and it's the values, like all of that. Oh, you yeah, know what I mean? I haven't gotten into that. Oh, that I'll aspect. tell you from what my understanding is, is that that $1, uh, like it, like there's values. Like if your bill is, you know, a thousand bucks or something, you know, you put the $1 stamp on there and you do not cross it off because that is the consideration, the tax or something on that amount of money, you know? I and get that. I get that part of it, but I haven't read it anywhere. Like I haven't found not one document that yeah. tells you that breaks it down, the value, no the document or law have I read that. But I did think that I saw something just recently, and I don't maybe it's in our chat in the files in the reconnaissance study group on Messenger. I think it's in the file section, but I thought I saw something where it says if you put a stamp on the remittance coupon that it is not right or something i can't remember the exact verbiage i'll have to look all right so cool i'll just do that okay so when i when i read the, the the dictionary nowhere did it say anything about putting a stamp on uh the coupon bond the bear bond the script certificate it just mm -hmm. In fact, it said bear bonds were exempt from stamps. I, so if it, so then that piece of paper, it's like, what is it called? We know they mail it as a bill or a statement, but we also know it has some sort of value. It's a negotiable and what, instrument. What escapes me is the proper, right. But what escapes me is what type of negotiable instrument is it? Is it the bear bond? We know it's a coupon. So is it a coupon bond? Uh -huh. And then it also falls into the same definition uh, uh, under script certificate. It, it could be that too, <laughs> you know? But when mm -hmm. I read all of that, it didn't say anything about a stamp. And all it said was don't detach them mm -hmm. to keep them together. And the trustee and the trustee has the authority to detach and deposit. And yeah, all that is what it, exactly. what I kind of got out of it. Yes, I love it. Oh my gosh. Can you give me the cash app so I can put it here in the um, description box for anybody who either, want, I is that a way to get in contact with you as well? They can send you a donation or something? <laughs> yeah, they can leave a note. They can leave a note. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, their phone number or email or something yeah okay that's cool is it like numbers the yeah. dollar sign and then universal wonder yeah dollar okay. sign universal wonder okay, i guess i remember that's also that. my venmo too oh, venmo. without the dollar sign universal wonder is venmo right. too so it's, it, they're well, both the same um, I just wanted to thank you for all the research you've been doing. You have been like, whoa, burning your eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> you have been doing so much. I have goals. I got to get out of here. Girl, you are like the priest, man. You are like the priest because you have been making sacrifices left and right. Boom, 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 boom. And cutting up the meat and serving it hot off the platter, straight out of the oven, hot fresh bread right out of the oven and um i thank you for putting it in perspective not being all over the place like some my, myself like 
I don't know, to them, you know. <laughs> but thank you so much. I'm gonna do this and I will give you a report back on what up. And I was thinking maybe I should do Verizon yep. while I'm doing it. Darn it. My phone. Yeah. Bill. My phone. Bill. Verizon phone. You know. Yeah. If you don't hear. Yeah. From so me, this, this tomorrow, I'm probably gonna spend some time going through the 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 s the filings and trying to get some more information out of them because I know there's some nitty gritty information in there that we could use on our behalf when we write to them, um, the trustee. So um, that I'll, when I find that information and what section it's in, I'll, I'll be sharing that in the chat. And Make I sure to drop the uh, chat link to anybody that wants to join. You mean on Saturdays? On Saturdays? Yeah. Or, or in, no, in our messenger group. For the Saturday one? If anybody wants to join. Yeah. No, our, our, our regular group. No, because I, yeah. every and Saturday, every Friday night, I've been coming on and dropping a link and whoever shows up, shows up. And usually I'm reading something, but, um, I like this hand holding thing. We got to stick together. And I really am thinking that Friday night or either Saturday, that is considered the Sabbath. And we're walking in what we know or what we're trying to learn. And I know that, you know, Yahuwah, our creator, he says, if you meet with me and sup with me, and also not to forsake the fellowshipping of others, we're supposed to be fellowshipping with one another. Um, this could be construed as commerce, but I look at it as a life and death situation for a lot of people because people need to have relief. And just like those Maccabee brothers, and I keep mentioning that because it just really rings true that if we don't do something, we're going to be overtaken and we need to do something. So I really thank you. And it's funny because I been doing my hair blue and it reminds me of wonder woman because i have been wondering so much lately <laughs> it's funny that i met you <laughs> you know with your name being wonder and i'm like hey we're the wonder woman not that we're um the justice league or anything or we're you know <laughs> justice or anything the pagan goddess but anyways i just wanted to thank you so much for being on here uh my feet are cold i gotta turn the heater on gotta get some to eat I got to make it to the post office so I could do my two registered mails because I'm going to do Verizon and Edison and send it somehow registered mail to the trustee and see what up. We'll see if that works because this other business with the registered agent or sending it to the, what was that called? Lockbox. <laughs> None of those things are working. But if this in fact is, you know, under an indenture. So I was and it's a trust, then, hey, this is where we got to go. Got to go to the David and Goliath. Hit them, boom, right between the eyes with our rock of revelation. I'm just saying. Well, you know you're not getting remedy calling these companies because they don't know what the hell is happening. So, I mean, you got to talk to somebody that knows what's happening so that you got to do it in writing because I got and have full faith in yeah credit with the United States Postal registered something or other to the trustee, you know. That's how we have to do it. Just saying. Now you wanna mm -hmm. now I just want to note, I wanted to note like you probably somewhere within your letter want to tell them what your terms are and how you want the account handled and how every month it should be and you know put all that in there because you don't want to be sending registered mail every month and spending yeah. that money to send it every month. So right. you want to make it, you want to word it so that this is going to be ongoing until you decide to cancel the account, you know, or whatever the case is, um, that it'll be an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's So great however you want, you're going to word that. Yeah, and now that I just took it over from the landlord, now I have it in my own name the legal entity uh i'm wondering if i should uh put also my account number 
as well, like taking it on from here on forward. I want my account zeroed out until I decide to cancel service. I don't then I'd be construed and think I meant for them to cancel my service because I need my heater on. My little pretty. <laughs> so or remember, it's a billing error. You're just going after the billing error and you want the account statement of accounting. That's what you're going after. It's almost like a conditional acceptance. You're saying, yeah. you know, I I got your offer and you know, I this is a billing error and you know, you're just gonna state the thing and, and ask for the accounting. And now that I think of it, um Brian Parker had put in the chat something about Iraq, meaning uh it's an acronym for putting the issue out and I don't know what the other R A C stand for, but it was like make it short and sweet. It's not frick freaking forty page letter. You're just doing it like this is the issue and this is the remedy or relief that I'm wanting to see and blah blah blah. Accountability or whatever. I don't know. I can't remember what the Iraq method is. Maybe someone could Google it, but I thought that was good. It was kind of almost like keep it simple, silly. You know, just state what you want, like, you know. Uh, can you pull it up? Can you pull that up? Let me take a look and see. Okay. Yeah. Let's see how I would do this. Share screen. Okay. Let me see. Uh, no, maybe this is not what I'm looking for. Right, hang on a second. Um, let I me just remember that. that it was like blue or something. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Iraq method. It's got to do with um. Oh, noter. No, who is it? Who's people that here it is ah oh, here it is okay i got it here okay all right let me see if i can share the screen yeah i can do this all right okay so share screen here's google well brian also said that the co-beneficiary is the co-trustee with the lesser value than the trustee the co-trustee is the co-beneficiary. Yeah, he said that. So here the it registered is. Agent. Oh. The registered agent. The registered agent is the co-beneficiary. Oh, that's why when I sent my first bill to the registered agent, they have it in their hand, and they said we. Oh wait, that's the one that didn't go. That's the one that didn't make it because it had a PO box to the registered agent. But when I did send it to their special, you know, billing error thing, they go, we have this in our hand. We just don't know what to do with it yet. We're doing research. So by me, you know, escalating it to their trustee over in New York, that guy, Goliath, he would know what to do with my rock of revelation. Right between the eyes. So here is Iraq. This is from uh, Brian Parker, who's studying about this. He says that uh, uh, Iraq is a action, um, acronym. It stands for issue. That's state the issue, then the rule, then the application, and then the conclusion. So this is something that we could probably do um, maybe on a separate piece of paper like some type of a directional thing like the issue is there's no money mm -hmm. Come and then there's the hjr 192 public law 7310 uh something about a trust being in place that maybe the rule is that stuff and then there's application how are we gonna uh, apply this 
how are you going to apply this? And then here's the conclusion is that um, I want you to zero out the account based on all these things. Boom. And it's kind of short. An effective essay follows some form of the IRA oh. instruction. Um, yeah. I would say in your letter, I would say in your letter, try to ask more questions than anything else. Yeah. Basically questions that they can't. Yeah, I agree. So ask questions this way. We don't have to necessarily be the one in court having to bring all the stuff. <laughs> and and the, and it's more conditional acceptance, you know, like um, you're kind yeah. of conditionally accepting. You know, I'd be happy to play this bill, but this is a billing error and this is incorrect right. or whatever, you know, however you want to word it, you know, but in a way where you're not being argumentative or you're not, you exactly. know, you really want them to to kind of put their foot in their mouth more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like the best way to go because... It's embarrassing if you misunderstand something and you are wrong, they put you to shame. You know, it's like when I yeah. see or they do that or they'll use your words against you. They'll use it against you in like some way. And CFPB tell you, thing. You, know. you know, that CFPB thing, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, when I was, and I still have to do my rebuttal for the house because when I asked them to give me a debt validation, all they did was send me the actual signature contract copy. That wasn't the debt validation. That was just my, me signing. Yeah. Cause you gotta be specific. Yeah. And yeah. So when yeah. you're requesting the document, you gotta state what documents you want. You you gotta let them know because they're gonna they think you're dumb and that you don't know. So if you don't tell them what documents you want back, exactly, you know what I mean? Like they're just gonna send you whatever's convenient to them. Well, let me just go there for a quick second. Since I have to do these other two registered mail, I have to do that registered mail for my rebuttal for their trustee or their people. So um, let me just gear up on that for a second. Uh, I asked them specifically for the debt validation and they just gave me, here. here's a copy of your contract. And I was like, no, I want to see that I was the one that's liable for the debt. Well, see how you signed right there? That made you liable. I go, but was I really the owner? Who owns uh, that name when you converted my name? You know, on the statement, which you call a bill. Who owns that name? Is there a quiet title? Does the state own, is that a, what is that, a, a military um, name? Because when I was in the military, and boy, did I tell myself I wasn't going to wear green, and what am I wearing? Green all the time. Okay, so when you have a BDU outfit, which is like a battle dress uniform, they put your name in all caps, your last name there in all caps. That means you're a military I don't necessarily know if it's employee other than you are now in the military and they're responsible for you. So that is exactly what Brian Parker was mentioning, something about the difference. I think it was him. The difference between an employee of the state versus someone that's in the military. <laughs> but it's the same personage where they put your name in all caps. So that's what I was asking them. Give me the debt validation. Prove to me that that's my name. And you know what they said? They go, you showed us the social security. And you said by perjury that that's you. I said, well, at that time in 2008, I didn't know that that social security number was tied to an all caps name. But, you know, I already said to her that social security card is not considered ID. And so by showing the driver's license at the time, and that and putting it together with my face 
that's the construct of the trust. That's what they're doing. It's called peonage or personage. And in a way, it's almost like you're getting married into the military and becoming a soldier or a military person with the state. So I know when I was in the military, I was owned by Uncle Sam. They made me get all these shots and everything. They told me what to eat, what to wear, where to sleep and all that stuff and what to do. So it's the same thing. All of us are being converted as if we are in Babylon, um, having our name changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego or something, you know, we're having a whole new name conversion. So I needed to find out when I send this to the trustee, I'm going to put the Lord's prayer up on the top, obviously, to let them know that there's someone higher than them. But also there's steps in there about forgiving us our debts and forgiving our trespasses. And if I made a mistake, which I did, obviously, I have to mention that, that I made a mistake. But I don't know. Was there anything else that I might have forgotten? Because I have to put my case through. So, so I get back the relief that I want. I have to state a, state a claim. I need to state a claim. And I don't exactly know how to state a claim for relief. So, I read... I read um I read this book called The Ten Magic Words to um what's the full name? Hold on. The Ten Magic Words to immediately remove any debt. And it's basically conditionally accepting. So mm. it's the ten magic words are I can I conditionally accept your offer upon proof of claim. Ooh. Proof of your claim, right? So mm -hmm. um so let's say, you know, the police officer gives you a ticket, right? It's saying like, okay, officer, I conditionally accept your offer upon proof of your claim that state law requires my non-commercial vessel to be registered, mm -hmm. right? Easy. You're not arguing, but you're, you're asking for, um, uh, you're asking for proof. Mm -hmm. Or if the more if they're sending you a mortgage statement, you know, dear, dear trustee, um, I conditionally accept your offer upon proof of claim that my signature and note for loan number, blah, 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 did not 100 percent pay off my loan in full at closing. <laughs> you know, it's simple. Keeping it simple. I conditionally accept if you can um, you can show me that, you know, that this is. um that I am not due interest or you can provide me with the full accounting and this is not a billing error. Um, you know, word it in a way that that feels right for you is what I'm trying to say. But you want to um, mm. conditionally accept it in a, and you don't want to like, argue it in a sense. You oh, would yeah. more want to like put the burden of proof, put, put all the burden of proof on them. Yeah, because now it's coming to me. You know, if these uh, so-called courts or lower courts or military and they see people being a belligerent uh-uh you're going to war yeah because all what does it say i will protect all what's it called against foreign and domestic enemies then they make us kind of like a domestic enemy yeah so we do want to do that acceptance thing and that's what i think that lord's prayer is all about is acceptance you know and forgiveness or but, so i guess what you could say for so yeah so i guess what you could say for verizon um you know i conditionally accept your offer upon proof of claim upon proof that you can provide me with the full accounting stating that this hasn't been paid already but you know word it better than that something yeah. like along those lines mm -hmm. like you're asking for the account you're, you're you're asking for the accounting basically it conditionally accepting their offer you know if they can provide the the the, the full accounting and, and with the forms that you want and you know however you want to word it yeah because i think that that one letter i just did on a video uh yesterday or the day before 
It was a letter regarding the car. I started off with the Lord's Prayer, and then the more I kept going, it did appear that I was, you know, accusing them on the, uh, you know, Title 15, 1692, says that you, you know, aren't supposed to be putting cash and credit together. I mean, I was just stating that fact, but I was like, am I arguing or pointing out their flaw thing or oh here's, here's what i think here's what i think i think that first initial letter should be friendly with no laws mm -hmm. no nothing right mm -hmm. now they decide to dishonor it after you've asked them and you did you know now you're going to come with the affidavit of fact i think that's when you begin to state law that's when you begin to put you know all of that stuff in there and you have the notary send that on your behalf oh yeah <laughs> Did you reach your hand in the cookie jar? <laughs> well, second letter. I, have I did. Picture. I have a picture of you with your hand in the cookie jar. It looks like you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to get on this stuff and um, I get myself something to eat. Turn on the heater because I'm cold. Right? So the first letter should be the first letter should be easy and like just short and sweet and to the point. And then if they they want to give you that back and forth bull up BS. That's when you get the affidavit and the notary involved. Well, that's what I already did through the CFPB. And they did send me the picture of my signature on the car contract. And I was like, that's not what I asked you. I asked you for the debt validation and the gap. You know, I needed the general. That's what happens when you're not specific with them. I did. That's what happens when you're not specific. I they was know. specific. I said, I want to have the debt validation and I want to see the gap, you know, the general accounting uh, principles. Show me the ledger. They're like, oh, well, you'd have to get Right. But did you tell them if they didn't? But did you tell them if they didn't provide that within a certain amount of days that you would consider this um, debt obligation paid in full? Like, you got to, like, put those specifics well, in there. Like, if you don't that, provide me with this, I'm going to consider this, you know. Well, that was 2008, and I already paid for that car, and I've had, like, four other cars after that. It's an old thing. I did want all the money back, and I did ask for that. I asked for all the money back. But anyways, I did send that letter that it seems so lame to me. It feels so weird to be talking all, you know. I am his disciple, which, you know, I'm trying to be, <laughs> I'm trying my best, but it just sounds so religious sounding, you know, but Eric on one of the Zooms, he was saying, you got to come, you know, come from the higher, highest source. And I'm like, okay, it just doesn't sound professional. It sounds spiritual, right, you know. In his service, yeah. I'm a missionary. 